Henny Krunovalt and the Sassel Subaru team went searching for that pole position, Steve, but unfortunately only ended up on the second row of the grid. And there was a lot of work to do for those guys. A lot of pressure on Team Afrox with their BMWs. They know they've got a fight on their hands. The front row dominated by the S4. Sapuka in second, and Michael Stevens stepping up and taking his pole position at the home circuit of Audi. There you can see the two Audis on the front row, and both of them now in S4 machinery. They'll be looking behind them at Melville Priest and Henning Krunovald in the Subaru. On the third row, it's all about uh, Johan Faris, still in the A4, not in the S4 yet. And second of the BMW's Taylor. Then Richard Pinard in the other Subaru, and then Marco de Cunha in the Nissan. Behind them comes Tanith Gardner and Paolo de Cunha in the second of those 350Zs. Michael Steven gets it on pole, but more importantly, the car is starting to look really solid. Yes, most definitely. Uh, you know, obviously we, we, we raced the car in Cape Town, we had a few small issues. Uh, the guys have worked hard and, you know, got both cars ready for PE home race. And, yeah, we've come out put it 1-2 on the grid in, in qualifying. That's only the beginning of the day. We need to really put our heads down now and make sure that we can convert that into wins. In terms of a team, information uh, being passed to each other, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic you find yourself on the front row. This is a wonderful debut for you and the team. No, definitely. You know, I think we, as Michael said, we did a few changes yesterday and they seem to pay dividends this morning. Um, and as he says, you know, I think we've got to button up now and make sure we bring these cars one and two at the end of the day. Race one, and here we go down towards turn number one. Ten cars about to go to do battle. And into turn one, it's S4's one and two. Sapuka tucking in behind, looking for a way through. Coming through on the background there, look at that. Already pressure from Priest around the outside, and Taylor going around the outside of Grunewald. So the two BMs are not holding back anything on Grunewald. I uh, couldn't agree with you more, actually. I was speaking to uh, the boys in the pits from Team Afrox BMW. They really looked a bit steely-eyed, as I mentioned earlier on. And I think they've got something to prove here at Aldo Scribanti. Not an easy track, and as you're well aware of, Greg, uh, a lot of tyre wear on this abrasive surface. Fortunately, only out there for six laps, but they've got to give six laps of absolute flat-out action now. Look in the background already. The BM looking up the inside. Taylor on free and makes it stick pretty easily coming into the hairpin. And things looking pretty good for BMW. They've moved up positions, both cars, and now trying to hunt down the four-wheel drive. Yeah, it looked really strong in qualifying, there's no doubt about that, and uh, we weren't surprised, to say the least, that uh, both Sapuka and, uh, of course, Steven Rompol on board right now with Henny Grunewald. Out of Dunlop coming into the main straightaway now, these guys are going to have to work hard. Sapuka playing the uh, sort of tail gunner role here, trying to keep everybody at bay, but remember, he's got a similar car to Michael Steven, so he's going to have the same kind of pace, but right now, Michael Steven is eating this field up, and no one is even close. In the background, there's another move from Taylor, looking on the inside, can't quite make it stick, but he's definitely putting the pressure onto his teammate. One of the big advantages, of course, as we go on board again with Henny Krunovald, nice shot this as well. Sapuka still being under a constant pressure from him. He needs to find a way through. I think Henny's got a thing to prove here. But what I was going to say is the fact that they do uh, give information within the team, and it does help set the cars up for both of them. 100%. And, of course, with Michael Steven and the engineering degree he's got, he's definitely going to be helping out his uh, teammate. Look at how defensive Chops is going. Around the outside, you might see a Subaru able to use its all-wheel drive system, but the Quattro wins out for now and maintains that second place. But he is under massive pressure. This little in-house battle is allowing Michael Steven to get away. And more importantly, especially for the BMWs, it's allowing them to catch up. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of power there. Fourth gear right now on board with Henny Grunewald, trying to get hard on the brakes. And Chops has got a really good line there. But he gets great drive, gives him a little nudge, tries to go on the inside rather than the outside. Does he have the pace? Look at this power of this S4. Oh, he's got a problem. He's definitely got a problem. Chops has got a problem. Yeah, he went down the straightaway there, and oh, he's fallen back dramatically. Something's gone wrong in that S4. The BMs have got past, so, so is Faree. Looks like Pinar's going to get through into turn one. So Chops Apuka just missing a gear or something wrong with the car as he came onto the main straightaway. He has lost out on five positions. Big pressure here from Johan Faree on Melville Priest, bringing lots of pressure. Tight, really tight stuff. Can't get past though. Melville Priest, very, very good on uh, making that 335 very wide. Here comes Taylor on the inside. Looks like Grunewald's having a bit of a problem. Taylor goes flying down the main straightaway and overtakes Henny Grunewald for second place. So it's BMW moving up in a second. Subaru is down to third. A4 looking up the inside and can't make it stick. Here comes Melville Priest. Can he get through on Grunewald? Grunewald seems to be ailing there a little bit. It's not firing like it used to. And he's definitely got a problem now that Priest is on his tail. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. It's really not on the pace, but uh, maybe it'll come right. You know, these cars can be really, really finicky out of that uh, sweep at the moment on their way to the final corner, which will be... Here's a move up on the inside. Look at that. Melville Priest squeezing through and 
Ben Krunewald going down again. So the birthday boy is not having it all his own way here, especially in race number one. Lots of traffic and lots of damage on some of the other cars and the other classes at the moment, but our focus right here on Class A. This is the nuts and bolts. A free, still looking good. Final corner of the final lap. It's going to be a hometown victory for Michael Steven. He's going to be very happy about that. Another victory for the S4 coming out and doing the damage at the Engine Extreme Race Day. He comes across to beat out the two BMWs and Johan Free in fourth place in the A4 Indy Oil Audi. Well, not a great result for Henny Krunovald on his birthday today, but I'll tell you what, he did set the fastest lap. Uh, 107.423 is going to put him in good stead on pole for race number three. Well done to Michael Steven, though. He takes the victory. There is confirmation. The Engine Extreme Audi winning at the Engine Extreme Race Day. Two BMWs behind him, the A4 and the Scooby of Richard Pernod in fifth. You put that on pole, and you didn't look like you were in any kind of trouble whatsoever. Great win, great race. Yeah, really. It was a great result. Um, started on pole, got to the front in the first corner, and, yeah, you know, controlled the race from there. Uh, we, Anthony was quick at the end, and he started catching us, um, but I think we'll be all right for the second race. So reversing four cars, and it's a rolling start. Let's get ready for race number two. I can't tell you, Leon Ferry was on pole, but he's been pulled off the start grid line. He's got problems. Yeah, had a broken hub and had to pull the car off on the start line there, which gives the BMWs one and two into turn one, and they one and two side by side. In fact, it's two on the inside, which means Priest gets the whole shot. Taylor slots in, but look at Steven already starting to push. Has a big look up on the inside of Anthony Taylor. Well done for backing out, heading into the engine S's, but couldn't quite make it stick there. Then it's the Subaru of Pinot. Good start from him. Let's see if he can stay with these front boys. Yeah, let's see, indeed. The one thing about uh, Team Afrox on the BMW is Greg. I was speaking to Donovan Van Heerden. He did say there are no team orders in this team. That's for sure. It's every man for himself when they're out on the black stuff, or the grey stuff, as we like to call it here in PE. Watch out for Grunewald coming from behind they had that five minute gap to do the work on the on the uh, grid and unfortunately for Faria it didn't work out but it looks like Krunewald's car has been sorted out with that little element he had in race one so Michael Stevens still in the mix right now he's gonna want a bag for the points and Chop Sapuka will need to impress this PE crowd because they're also rooting for him Kenny Krunewald Looking good, that car, they're in the mix as well as that Nissan, he needs to improve this weekend as well. Well, Paolo de Cunha ran a little bit wide coming out of that final corner, now as they go down the back straight, the main straightaway, these guys starting to fan out, Taylor looks on the inside, comes up the inside, he's got too quick, oh, he's oh. taken out Priest, oh. he takes a little tap, and the Red Sea just opens up, and the Audi sneaks through. Is there nothing these BMWs can't do, that is the most perfect pirouette I've ever seen in my life. Very well done in terms of... Uh, you know, tandem crashing, but it didn't work out for them, and that's handed the race lead to Michael Stevens. Sapuka all over the back of Pinard, and it's basically four-wheel drives at the front end once again. Quattro, all-wheel drive, Quattro, all-wheel drive, and then the Nissan tucked in behind this battle. Henny Krunewald on board with him now, heading into the hairpin. And after that incident, whose birthday is it really? Michael Stevens? <laughs> I think it might be Michael Stevens more than anybody else's. It was quite awesome to see. We're on board here. But look at this. Here's the replay. Taylor goes on the inside. He clips his teammate coming into turn one. The two of them side by side. The red sea of Afrox BMWs opens up, and the Audi just sneaks through. That was like synchronized swimming. It was perfectly done. Could have given them a 10 out of 10 for uh, synchronized crashing. But uh, it has lost them lots of ground. Taylor's already made up one position, though. He goes on the inside and passed Paolo de Cunha into turn one. Have a quick recap. It's Michael Steven, then Pinard. He has the battle for three and four. Sapuka in the Engine Extreme S4 with some big pressure coming from the birthday boy. Oh yeah, he's going to know that big time. I mean, he always does. But you know what? Henry Grunewald will, if he can, find a way through. There's no doubt about it. And we've still got some laps. We're on lap three at the moment. Into fourth gear, Henry Grunewald. Immense pressure on Chop Sapuka at the moment. Check this on the inside. Sapuka just very daintily. Oh, but he's run wide. So oh, you can't do that, Chops. Let's open up the door. Henry Grunewald sneaks through. Oh, and gives him a little tap. Puts him onto the grass. Thank goodness he's got Quattro. <laughs> Otherwise, that car would have been all over the place. Watch out, Chops. You're under pressure. The Q8 Oils tubular tech Nissan is on your tail. And Acuna, he wants another victory. He's already had one this season down in Cape Town. And the improvement on that car has been dramatic. I can't wait to see when those boys are in the 370s. That'll be something special as well. But you know what? He wasn't so off the pace in practice well, doing some great lap times around here at Aldous Grabanti. He just couldn't quite put that into a qualifying time. But he is quick. And he is determined. I remember we've got a whole bunch of battles happening out there. In-house battle here between the two Sassel Subarus. And it looks like Pinard's under pressure from Grunewald. Pinard's got the blue stripe there. You can see on board with Grunewald now. Heading into the engine S's. And these two Sassel Subarus are definitely starting to close up on the front end. 
Pinot, I think, might just be holding Henny up a little bit. Remember, Henny will probably have a little bit of extra pace due to the amount of skill this man has as a driver. But not to take anything away from Richard Pinard. Remember, he's a man who's also taking a victory here this season in Bridgestone Production Cars. No, I can't quite agree with you. I'll be interested to actually find out whether the team itself, as uh, with Tanith Garda, also Richard Pinard and Krunovod, are also passing off information within the team to actually help them perform. No doubt about that. That's exactly what they would be doing. But, of course, when they get onto the uh, race stuff, it's every man and lady for themselves. You've got to go out there and beat your teammates, and that's exactly what Krunovod is doing. However, he is not going to catch up onto the back end of Michael Steven. Steven really pushing that car. But more importantly, check it out, that Afrox BMW. He's moved up in a fourth place and is looking to close down and possibly steal that away. The third place I'm talking about from Pinard. No doubt about it. Also, the other thing to think about as well, he is the reigning champion, and he will always feel that he's under pressure to perform. Yeah, he's starting to feel the pressure a lot more, considering the fact that, Steve, everywhere we've been, we've had a different manufacturer take a victory in the new format of Bridgestone Production Cars. We've seen a Nissan win, we've seen the Subarus win, we've seen BMW win, and the Audis, and the new Audis have already taken victories. So basically, it's been five different uh, cars that have had opportunities to steal the, the limelight on the day. On board Team Afrox BMW, it is Anthony Taylor bringing pressure on Richard Pinner. The other thing to consider as well here, Greg, is the fact that the series is about champions. We've got lots of them in the, of them in the series, and also the kind of cars we've got, supercharged, turbos, we've got all sorts of things in the mix. Yeah, there's a uh, twin-turbo BMW out doing a turbocharged all-wheel drive Subaru. And this Subaru, oh, look at this! Can you handle this? Supercharged versus turbocharged, both with four-wheel drive systems. And out of the hairpin, Michael Steven is having to go very defensive. He should be driving an A8, but it's the only way you're going to make that car wide enough to keep Henny behind you. Henny Grunewald on the pace, fourth gear right now. We were in the final lap. Has he got enough to do it? Down on the outside, having a look. Steven closes the door. There's no way he's having anything of this. He's coming out to see if he gets better drive than Michael. Michael just forces him wide. That's good driving from Michael Steven, but oh, there's a car in the way. He has to come out of that one. So the chicken flag comes out. Michael Steven makes it two victories out of two starts. He wouldn't have thought that would happen, considering the fact that he started in fourth position at the beginning of this race. But two victories it is for the Engine Extreme Audi S4. What was your highlight? The pirouette of Team Afrox BMW. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff there to turn one. But a great drive from Taylor. He brought him up to third place on the road. And that's behind Krunewald, who had a much better outing in the second heat. And of course, he'll be on pole for race three great defensive driving for the last two laps michael yeah it was uh, really an interesting race uh you, you hadn't pulled off before the race started the bms took each other out and gave me the lead i thought I, it was all easy cut and dry uh four laps from the end i saw a, a charging subaru and uh, the last two laps i had to defend like hell so it was coming at the end but i'm glad i could pull it off 